Hello, it's David from David Sabre Electrical, and I've finally broken up for Christmas. Hooray! Which explains the hangover, but uh, I'm still going to put together a video for you today uh, of five indispensable items for any electrician's toolbox. Okay, first up is the joist magnet. I can't take credit for this particular tip as it comes from my colleague Nigel, shown here in perhaps one of his more passive states where he's just about to not actually stab me in the buttocks with a screwdriver, at least according to the fact that the silly bastard is still smiling, but nonetheless he himself gleaned this particular tippet from an old school builder who had a hard-on for good old common sense. What we have here are a couple of neodymium or rare earth magnets stuck together for some pretty powerful pulling force, then wrapped with electrical tape to stop their metal coating from leaving scrape marks against the ceiling, because, well, scraping the ceiling is what I'll be doing with them. I'm installing down lights into this plasterboard ceiling, um, but I need to know where the joists are above me to make sure that I don't uh, fall foul of those as I get the hole saw out and start cutting my holes. You do come across uh, some jobs where the installer has wholly or partially cut through a structural joist just for a pleasing downlight arrangement, uh, which is perfectly fine so long as you advise the client to wear a hard hat whenever they're in the room afterwards. Uh, obviously we don't want that here. Um, now I. Um, I happen to know that the joists are running down this way in the room because I've been in the attic above and I also know that there's no access from the attic above to this, this part of the room because it's boarded and full of crap. In fact, I know it's full of immovable crap because it's my attic. I don't actually need a downlight here. I'm just cutting one in for the purpose of this video so that'll be a nice surprise for the wife when she gets home and wonders what I've been up to on my Saturday morning. But anyway, I need to, uh, I know I've got joists going down here. I want to put a downlight in and I need to know where those joists are and here's where the joist magnet comes in handy. If I start running that around the, on the ceiling, Hopefully not making any scraping marks. Eventually, oh, here we go. We have stuck to something. Now, obviously what we've stuck to there is a plasterboard screw. And if there's a screw there, then that must be where the joist is because the plasterboard is held onto the ceiling by the screws. And if I follow that down in a line, there's another screw there, another screw there. So there, there is one joist. I can mark that with my pencil. Uh, the next one, probably about 60 centimeters or so away maybe. Something like that, maybe 40 centimetres. Oh, here we go. Yep, we've definitely got another one here. And let's just find where the, the one closest to the door is. There we go. Yep, one there, one there. So I can see by doing this from below where my joist positions actually are. So I should be able to. Uh, install a downlight into this space here between these two joists. Uh, reasonably sure that there are no obstructions that I'm going to hit. Obviously, there may be some other things up there. There may be water pipes, uh, cables, um, a wooden noggin going across the other way. I don't know. I can't be completely certain without seeing it from the other side. But I can be reasonably sure that at least if I put a hole here, it's not going to hit those joists going down the room. There you go. The joist magnet, jolly handy for downright installations. Okay. I've marked my downright position and I've piloted it. I don't always pilot it. Uh, it depends on whether I can get to either side or I can't here, so there's not much point in me piloting the hole, but uh, if I had access to the other side, then um, I would put a pilot in and then go and visually verify uh, that the hole is in the right place and the hole saw isn't going to do foul anything when I cut the larger hole to accommodate the downlight. But how do I find that teeny tiny little hole? It can be quite awkward to go back into the attic or wherever and, and try and find that hole you've just drilled. And that's where my second useful tool comes into place, which is the, the FUW or the fucking useful wire as we call it. Uh, and it's 110 centimeters or so of 2.5 mil. Uh, wire. Mine's in red, other colours are available uh, and for uh, this particular hole here I can shove my wire in and then if I did have access to the other side I'd be able to go up and it's a lot easier to find the end of that wire than it is to find a tiny hole, especially on say a lath and plaster ceiling when there's a lot of debris and horribleness uh, on the other side. Um, also, of course, uh, this has more flexibility than a rod and has got me out of trouble on many a sticky occasion where I've had to try and fish a cable through in an awkward place. Um, I can also fashion it into hook or loop ends. Um, 
and like I say it's got me out of trouble a lot of times in fact uh, this is in pretty ropey condition now it's been in the toolbox for six years this particular length I always get quite upset when I lose it and I, I've managed to find it every time it's uh, it's part of the tool team so I don't really want to uh, be without it but it's a jolly handy thing to have and of course it's free so uh, pick yourself up an example and uh, whenever you've got a an awkward fishing or pokey job that uh, you need a bit of wire for well the FUW is man enough for the task Handily enough, useful tool number three can also be used on this downlight demonstration and it is the Dade or the Dust and Debris Eliminator. Now hole sawing into ceilings is always a horribly messy task so if we take our Dade and place our hole saw in it this hole saw is so blunt um, this is going to be quite an awkward cut. I've got a new one somewhere and I've managed to go and lose it so that's always a pain in the ass isn't it? Not cheap things either. Um, so apologies for <laughs> any struggling I might have making this cut. Let's drop the dade in there. There we go. And as you can see, that sits around the hole saw uh, and should catch much of the muck. I am going to grab a bucket. Kind of the wife telling me off too much for making a mess of the bedroom. So uh, let's get this hole drilled. Blunt, like I say. Ah. Oh, that really is bad. I should have got a new hole saw before I did this demonstration. There she goes. But not a lot of debris came spewing down because it's all been contained in the dade. And into the bucket it goes. Lovely stuff. And there's our hole. Okay. There we go. One uh, unnecessary downlight installation. Well, I can't complain too much, just needs a bit of uh, touching up on the paint around the damn thing. But there you go, it works. <laughs> right, on to the next useful tool. Okay, next up on my list of handy tools is this, the Nipex Ergo Strip. And here it is, the Nipex Ergo Strip. Um, very pricey for, for what it is really, considering it's just a bit of plastic with some metal blades inside and some springy hinges. Um, I, I've got a feeling that I paid perhaps around £25 or so ex VAT from CEF, although uh, many um, of the electrical wholesalers uh, sell Nipex gear, so uh, they're not difficult to find. But it's rather a useful tool to have in the box, I find, um, because when you have different kinds of flex, they can be rather awkward to strip. Um, obviously, you've got your normal method of chopping down the ends and then trying to peel back the sheath. Uh, some people use a knife, but of course there's a risk there that you're going to cut into the insulation of the wires within. If I take this, so uh, this is a bit of 2.5mm three-core flex here, and if I pop open the device, I can put it in and rotate it around, and it gives me a cut, as you can see, um, that uh, doesn't go straight into the uh, into the cores, so it's uh, it's cut just, just above the edge of the... Uh, the outer insulation and allows me to pull it apart. If uh, if the jacket is difficult to remove after that then there's also this uh, blade down the side which if I run it down, the jacket's coming off quite easily here but um, you can see that it, it strips out, opens up the jacket allowing you to remove the um, the outer jacket without if it's a, a tricky one to to get off so it's quite a clean way of stripping out a flex and it works rather well um, now i've got a much thinner cable here this is a bit of two core flex and on the other side of the gadget is uh, a another blade designed for the thinner flexes and as you can see again that allows me to um to open it up and to take the end off there without it having uh, got into the the cores uh, inside. So that's a very versatile bit of kit. It also works as well on coax. I've got some coax here. Um, just open that up again and whiz it around. 
bish bash bosh off comes your jacket and we still have our um, our braiding there uh, it's not gone through and, uh, and chopped all that to pieces so uh, it works really well uh, nice little tool that and also it has uh, as you can see here various um, blades for then stripping your your wires after you've cut them uh, so that's uh, rather versatile uh, like I say expensive for what it is but uh, a jolly handy tool nonetheless so I'm quite happy with that okay just one item left to show you today where's your tool what fucking tool this fucking tool huh what you've never seen scum brilliant film anyway apart from my misquoting of that what we have here is a uh, rather substantial piece of metal and an evil looking thing it is too look at this it's got this pincer mechanism on one end and this plunger on the other and the whole thing's made out of a uh, substantial weighty bit of metal so it's a, a handy thing to keep in the uh, the cab of the van should you ever find yourself in some road rage incident did you just slice me up you bmw driving git well, how about you oh, shit. Okay, so uh, useful though this is for spilling tea all over the office floor, it is actually uh, a nail puller. Um, and I'm going to use it here to uh, remove a nail from the uh, what's left of me office floor. It's all in a, in a bit of a crappy state, but uh, I've got a nail here. Um, obviously nails are a little awkward to get, a hold, get out of uh, floorboards, say I have to cut this floor up for example. Um, now, whatever I do to remove the nail is going to be some damage to the floor so this is going to take a bit of a chip out of the floor as I do it and it's, it can be a bit hit and miss as well sometimes the nails come out nice and cleanly and sometimes they don't so we'll just have to try our luck with this one and see where we get with it but I'm going to place it so that the uh, the back pincer is just behind the nail there and I'm going to give it a bit of a, a bit of percussive whacking there we go and then I'm going to draw it in so that the front of the pincer grabs the nail and out it comes and like I say a bit of damage to the floor um, sometimes it comes out a lot cleaner than that that's actually one of the, the, the poorer examples it's because this floor's already wrecked isn't it but uh, nonetheless the nail is out um, and if we were assuming that this were a floor where we weren't bothered about its final appearance it's going to get covered over anyway we just want to get the floorboards up quickly and that is a jolly useful tool for accompanying that, um, accomplishing rather that, uh, that particular feat so that's it for this video. Are there any tools I've missed off my list? Something that you would have put on as a, uh, an indispensable tool for the box? If so, stick it in the comments below. I'd love to, uh, to read about it. But uh, so long and I'll see you next time. Buy this hat on all through this bloody video. Yep. And you didn't think to tell me? Nope. Out of hell with it, I'm not doing it again.